It is great to be back with you guys, and uh, yeah, we're excited just about what the Holy Spirit's doing. You know, we've been coming here since, uh, well, to the country since uh, early 90s, actually late 80s, early 90s. Tony Fitzgerald brought me in the first time, and then we got to know some of the churches, and it's been a blast just to see what God's doing. And, uh, you know, I, I just... Uh, I'm glad Susie gave that teaching because I, I think I want to really share with you more just something I sense the Holy Spirit speaking for you as a congregation that it's, um, it's a new season. It's a new time. It's interesting. This is the halfway mark or next week will be the halfway mark in the year. It's hard to believe, huh? You know, notice how quickly they go. You know, it's like, what? We're already going to change. How many of you are getting, remember, how will I ever write 2000 versus 19? How many of you don't even remember 19? You know, it's like, <clears throat> what the heck? <clears throat> but in that, you know, a lot of us have had a lot of things spoken and a lot of things said uh, from the Holy Spirit. And there's a lot of things that we've all been wishing for, you know, that someday wish upon a star that God's going to come and demonstrate himself. Well, I, th I think that hope deferred makes the heart sick. True? And a lot of us are sick. And I think the Lord wants to bring um, a place of freedom for us. And he wants to bring a place of restoration, place of healing. And I want to read you a few scriptures here. Um, here, I'll read this one to you first. I think you probably have heard this, but it's, this is from the message. Matthew chapter 11, starting with verse 28, says this. Are you tired, worn out, burned out on religion? Come to me, come to me, get away with me, and you'll recover your life. I'll show you how to take a real rest Walk with me, work with me, watch how I do it. Learn the unforced rhythm of grace. I won't lay anything heavy or ill-fitting on you. Keep company with me, and you'll learn to live freely and lightly. That doesn't sound like church. You know what I mean? Because most of the time when we go to church, it's don't, stop, behave, right? And it's going to cost you 10%, you know. <laughs> <clears throat> That isn't good news. That's bad news. You know, it's like, dude, I'm out of here. You know, but that's that. But in that, it's that, that point of where we, because we don't see the manifest presence of Jesus in our lives on a daily basis, we form what is known as religion. So, we, you know, we can't touch God. So we'll, we'll just, we'll make it God. You know, this is how you do God. And, you know, we, we, we have things happen we, in, in our history. We look over church history. And when something of significance happens, we make a monument. You know, we're just like, we should build an altar here because it's something that when the, we see that presence of God that we're all hungry for and we long for and we want to see more of Jesus. But in this, <clears throat> the, I believe the Lord resists that type of thing. I believe he resists religion, but he blesses his people. And he wants us to walk in that unforced rhythm and he wants us to see, listen, I'm not putting heavy things on you. You know, back there's, there's several things like we've gone through over the years of different formulas of how we get God. You know, we, we thought, first of all, it was all in our confession. You know, if we believed it, we said it, we claimed it, we named it, we're all going to heaven. But then that didn't work. And then we tried to figure out, well, because it's sin in your life, so we'll do discipleship. And that didn't work because it became, you know, slavery. You know, and, and there was, you know... <laughs> Right? Remember for those of you that are around. And then, you know, there's a lot of other things we did to, you know, shall we say, like Susie, the term, conjure up the Holy Spirit. You know, we, we now, we've gone through the phase, what's, it's all about the worship. It's, well, now it's about the lighting. What's the chairs? It's the user-friendly. It's the seeker church. You know, it's like, listen, guys, here's what it is. It's Jesus. And what the Lord wants to do is to take off that heavy yoke of religion. And he wants us to begin to be able to move in that freedom of the Spirit and encounter him daily. His blessings are new every morning, not once a year, not special event, not a guest speaker, not that Sunday that we finally do. You know, it, it, is, it is new every morning, and his blessing is coming to set the captives free. We are amazed of the wealth of the church. Um, Financially, you may be thinking, well, I missed out. But, you know, it's like, but not just financially, but I'm talking about the anointing that rests in the church, and especially in South Africa. You guys 
you're pretty rich. You really are. You have a lot of pretty good men and women of God that are significant to the future of what God wants to do. And I think the Lord wants to bring about a place of releasing that spirit and to release the visionaries, to release the prophets, to release your teachers and your pastors, all fivefold. I believe the Lord wants to bring about that apostolic birthing, but not in a role of you're on my team, but more of this. Just like the apostles did, they went from town to town to town, establishing new things with new people into the kingdom of God, not just building our own little clan, cluster, you know, pyramid, whatever you want to call it, but just to that point that we see that we see that there are people being brought into the kingdom of God. And one of the things that struck me interesting in this is um, John chapter 5. I think you can relate to this. Do you remember when Jesus went, he was at the well, I mean, he went to the pool, and the, guys, the guy was sitting by the pool. Let me read it to you in the New Living. It says this. After Jesus returned to Jerusalem uh, for one of the Jewish holy days, inside the city near the Sheep Gate was a pool of Bethesda and five covered porches crowded with sick people, blind, lame, paralyzed, lay on those porches. When Jesus saw this man, he knew that he had been ill for a long time. He said, would you like to get well? I can't, sir, the sick man said, for I have no one to put me in the pool water when it bubbles up. Someone else always gets in there ahead of me. Jesus said to him, stand up, pick up your mat, and walk. Instantly, the man was healed. He rolled up his sleeping mat and began walking. But the miracle happened on the Sabbath. Whoa, that's rough. So the Jewish leaders objected. And they said to this man, who cured you? You, know, you? you can't work on the Sabbath. The law doesn't allow you to carry on the, your sleeping mat. But he replied, the man who healed me told me, pick up your mat and walk. And he said, who told you to do such a thing? And he says, I don't know. And Jesus had disappeared in the crowd. So in my Bible, it says, even on the Sabbath. And that's a good word for us today. Even on the Sabbath. Because sometimes when we come in, we come in with religious concepts of what church is going to be. We have a preconceived idea of what the manifestation of Jesus is going to be. And so in that, we find ourselves limited to what can be done and how it's going to be done. And we find ourselves living under a ceiling that caps us off and stops us from walking in the fullness of the manifestation of God. Not only does it cap us off in, in, our, in our situation here, like for instance, if I said to you, hey, Jesus is going to heal people right now, well, well, no, we can't do that. We, we have to bring the man back up, you know, because obviously the Lord's not going to show up without a good song, you know, that, you know, and, true, and that's kind of how we base ourselves. Or, no, you have to wait to the end of the service because that way people can leave that are uncomfortable, you know, and, and that's how that works, right? And we do those kind of an ideas, and we have this preconceived ideas of what God's going to do, how God's going to do it, and what that manifestation's going to be. But the Lord came in, and he broke down the religious practice of the day. They're all sitting by the pool waiting for what? The bubbling of the pool. Wow, what the heck? You know, that's, that's pretty of a cool thing. I mean, we would build a shrine there. You know, I, I think they have. But, you know, it's like, you know, you, you, we would do something and make it the holy. We'd be selling a little, here's the boiling water. You know, we, we'd be selling that, you know, at least America, we would. You know, this is, you know, this is how you do it. In fact, we got two with us. But, you know, <laughs> high is bitter. But that's how that works, right? We would make a shrine out of it. We would do something. But we would forget the essence of what's going on. What is the idea? Do you know that something of the supernatural takes place? That, you know, in, in the read in King James, it said that the angel would come and stir the pool. It's like, yeah. I mean, who, who cares how it bubbled? It bubbled, and if you fell in the pool or you got in the pool first, you got healed. That was it. Everyone was believing for that type of manifestation, but it had a limited manifestation, Right? Only one, any, meeny, miny, mo, catch one, the rest go home. You know, that's not how that works. It is that the Lord said this, do you want to be healed? That's the question. I believe that's the word of the Lord over you this morning. Do you want to be healed? Well, you know, I, you don't know. I, I've only got a kidney that, hey, do you want to be healed? 
Do you want to be set free? Do you want the prophetic words that have been spoken over your life to be manifested to the fullness of what Jesus says? Well, this is church. You can't do that. Even on the Sabbath, the Lord will come and bring healing in the midst of the house. Now listen. <clears throat> Don't just limit this to like Jesus bumps. Yeah, well, I just felt so good. Jesus just touched me. It was so good. Hallelujah. Yes. You know, and, you know that, that kind of an idea. Cause, you know, because we are in those preconceived ideas of how God's going to manifest his presence. But I got news for you. There are people in this room that are called to high destiny. That's everyone, by the way. But in that, you are called to fulfill the purposes of the Lord. And promotion is in the wings. Promotion is in the wings. And right now, I believe the Lord is saying, listen. I'm going to draw a line here, and I'm going to say it very clearly. Those of you who want to be on my side, all you have to do is step across. Well, don't we have to fast for 50 days? Don't we have to, you know, well, you can give money later, but, you know, you, do, don't I have to do this? Don't I have to do that? Don't I have to memorize 100 scriptures? No, we have to walk in obedience to what the Lord's saying. Many of us have prophetic words over our lives. Many of us have had people come through, point you out, name, address, phone number, etc. because you forgot. But you know, this is all these things that are coming, right? You've had those words, but you have not implemented the word of the Lord. And because of the situation, we find ourselves restricting ourselves to the bubbling of the pond instead of realizing that the healer is walking among us. And what the Lord wants to do is lift the ceiling. You know, like with you guys. I mean, can I, t can I talk to you guys? All right? yeah, I'm going to anyway, so you're tough. You know, but you know, you know, Julian and Kendra, they, they are they're anointed people. You know, you notice? Okay. And for a season of time, they have done some amazing things for the church. But I believe the Lord's taking you to a new level. I think he's brought you here for this season to re-equip you to reformulate, to have babies. Oh, you know, but to, <laughs> good luck with that. But, uh, you know, um, yeah. <laughs> it's, it's a long story. But, uh, you know, this, but as that takes place, I believe the Lord's giving you a promotion in your prophetic calling. I think you're going to be speaking to governments. I think you're going to be speaking to officials. I think you're going to become a voice of the nations. And not just this nation, because we already know, and this is, I know them, so it's not like new, new stuff. Uh, in nations, I think the Lord's going to mobilize you guys. But when he mobilizes you this time, and as you begin to go out, that they're going to listen. Give you a little example. Um, you know, we had all these problems. You know, you guys have, you know, everyone in the world is suffering under the terrorists and stuff like that. And the, the last bombing thing that took place up in London and stuff, not the fire, but the bombing, my heart was pricked. And I just said, where in the heck are the prophets? You know, just in the days of old, I was reading through the Old Testament, and it says, and they would go to the prophets, and the prophets say, hey, don't go down that road because they're waiting to ambush you. Go around this side, and you'll be able to catch them off guard. Where are, are the prophets? That elevation, elevation of gifting and knowledge and freedom, the Lord's going to release that gifting to the church. I think you're hired, okay? So I, I just want to speak that over you guys because I think that's a season that's coming. I don't care what anybody else says. The Lord says, okay? And I can speak that to you with confidence that the Lord comes in and he says, I don't care if the pool's bubbling and you're at the conference where they're calling out all the prophets. I'm telling you, pick up your bed. This is it. Does that make sense? You guys, man, Titch, Joan, I, you know, when we were together the other day, here's the truth. You haven't seen nothing yet. Sorry, Joan. <laughs> you know, how many of you believe that's a good work? I got news for you. It's not just for the village. It's for the nations. Hear clearly, nations. And the release that God's going to bring will change the shape of how the church does church. All right? You are honored to have that in your midst, that you actually, in your giving and in your serving, you get, get to be tagged along with that blessing. But I got news for you. Greater things are yet to come. You see it, buy it. You want it, get it. The only limitation will be that which you put upon yourselves. The favor of the Lord is right there. It's yours. 
And here's the nice thing about this. Not by might, nor by power, or by your own strength, your schemes, or even your staff. The Lord says, I will cause the capstone to be brought into place by my operational power, which is the word grace, grace. I see the Lord bringing that for you guys. And um, I see a little bit of a rest, place of regrouping, kind of washing your hands and changing uniforms. But this time, I said this to him the other day, it, it's not just one star, it's several stars on your shoulder that God's bringing you forward. And the people of the earth will hear as the generals speak. All right? Even on the Sabbath. Even on days when we're expecting to get something, maybe our, our tickle our ear, I believe the Lord is saying this. I want to remind you what I spoke to you on a better day. I want to stir up those gifts that have been planted in your heart, those promises that have been deposited in you. And you need to understand, and, and this is, well, I won't say it's for free, but it's sort of for free. This is it. You know, listen. You cannot stay here. You cannot maintain the status quo. Yeah. There is a release that is coming among you, and it's not for you. It's for the lost. And you need to build, you need to expand, and you don't, don't you dare build to maintain the status quo. You need to build bigger so you can contain, uh, contain the harvest that's going to come in. So you need to think about it, then times it. Okay, you understand? Now that's, you know, that's not because someone said, look, we need help on the building program. You're, you're going to need help with the building program. But here's how that works. Is that when the saints rise up and they see the outpouring of the Holy Spirit, it's no longer of, now we're going to have a campaign. We're all going to ask you to give and give more and then dig deeper. Now give one more time and no, again, and you know, it's like this and we're going to, you know, going to show you uh, pictures and promises. Listen, it says in the book of Acts that when the people were touched by the Holy Spirit, they were filled with a sense of awe. Now, the awe isn't like, oh, isn't that a cute little puppy? That's not what we're talking about. We're talking like, oh, my God, look, he's moving among us. You know? Look at people are being healed. People are being set free. People are being delivered. Woo-woo! You know, that kind of thing. That's the spirit of awe. And it says then, you, you may not want to hear this. You can leave now if you want real quick. Too late. Here it is. <laughs> They were pierced in their hearts and they brought their money, their jewelry, their land, their possession, laid it at the apostles' feet so that whatever the need was, the need was met. Um, yeah, it's you I'm talking to. Yeah, it's like, oh no, why did he say that? I'm out of here. You know, it, that's it. But I want you to understand, oh Lord, stir the pool, stir the pool. You know, and somebody will fall in, hopefully not me. But here's the Lord saying, I want to heal you all. I want to bring deliverance to you all. I want to demonstrate myself in might and power. And I want to tell you to pick up your bed and walk. Even on the Sabbath. Does that make sense? So if we see this happening, we see this promotion coming, then it's like this. It's who's on the Lord's side. You know, I heard a voice from heaven and they were talking and they say, who will go for us? Who shall we send? <laughs> well, send George. <laughs> That's what we pay him to do, right? Yeah, do the job we don't want to. Yeah, you know. <clears throat> and that's kind of how we draw the line. But in truth, if we want to be partakers of the blessing and not just sitting in the cookie, you know, the peanut gallery getting thrown a little tidbit morsel, so we go, yeah, our money well spent. Listen, you want to become a participant in the kingdom and not a spectator. You know, if you look at the story of Moses leading the children of Israel across, you know, the Red Sea and they come out into the wilderness, it's kind of an inequity. One guy, three million people, you know, follow me. And so, but what Mo said, went, right? There's a fire, there's a cloud tablets. You saw the movie. You know how it works. You know, God did all these things. He, did, he showed himself in power. But you see, for 40 years, the people of God did nothing but follow. They did nothing but listen, right? 
And when they came to the point, you know, this is before, when they came to the point, their opportunity to enter in to the promised land to get their inheritance that was spoken to their forefathers, Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Remember? That's who they were, the people of God. They became fearful. They withdrew, and they were afraid to go in because there were giants in the land. Did anyone ever say this is going to be easy? No. There are giants in the land. But don't be afraid, Joshua and Caleb said, for surely the Lord is with you and he will deliver them into our hands. Right? But what did they do? Oh, no, we can't go. This is too hard. We can't do that. So they didn't go. Do you know Moses' job changed at that point? You know that? He began, he, from that moment on, when the Lord said they can't go, he became the pastor of the Church of the Living Dead. What's your vision for me, pastor? That you would die. And they did. They walked around, everyone above the age of 20, walked around for 40 years as Moses led them to die. Listen, nobody wants the pastor of the church of the living dead. True? Nobody wants to go to that church. I hope. We need to be participants that will go into the promised land. We need to be those that would inherit that which is God has spoken to us, to our forefathers, the prophetic words that were given to the founders. Correct? Isn't that what we want? Now look, don't write this off to young people, right? Because remember, the over under 20s got to stay, 20 and under. But how long did they walk around the promised land? 40 years. So now the youngsters are 60. How's that? You know, what? Yeah. Not retirement, but now going to go to war. So don't write this off. Well, that's just for the teenagers. That's just for the young people. That's just for the under 30s. This is for every man, woman, and God who will be willing to obey and go across into the promised land that we would inherit those things that God has for us. Right? Some of you know the ways of the Lord extremely well. You're rich. You have the knowledge of the word deposited into your heart. You know that you know that you know the truth of God. But here's the point. Now it's time to go and possess the land. And it's going to be more than our confession. It's going to be more than singing the song louder. It's going to be more than dancing or blowing the chauffeur or, or, you know, holding a flag. It's going to be, here I am, Lord. Spend my life. And as you make that investment, we will not be disappointed in the inheritance that we get. We've heard it for a long time, haven't we? We've had these promises dangling over our head for a long time, haven't we? But it's now it's time to put our money where our mouth is. Belly up to the bar, boys. This is it. God is pouring out his spirit, and he's ready for those who will say, here I am, send me. Your visionaries will have greater visions. Your prophets will have more, I mean, exacting words. Your leaders, your pastors, everything's going to step up. You're not called to be placeholders. You're called to be participants. You're not called to be wanderers. You're called to be warriors. And that's what the Lord's saying. Come on in. The water's fine. And I just sense the Lord wants to bring that to us. I think he wants to even show you this morning that he isn't kidding. He isn't kidding. You know, we were talking in the first service, what happens if Jesus walked into this room right now? You know, the WWJD, you know, you guys know that bracelet? Yeah, what does that mean? Bummer, I thought it, if we want Jack Daniels, I have to change the teaching here just a minute. Uh, you know. <laughs> See, I know you thought that. I, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Spent a lot of time in England. Okay, but, you know, this is it, right? No, it's, it, it is. What would Jesus do? How would Jesus manifest himself if he walked in this room right now? Would we all be sitting around waiting for the pool to bubble? Or we'd say, woo-woo, right here, Lord, right here. Would he set you free right there in the white shirt? Is, is that your wife right next to you? That's good. I, no, you, you two together? I just want to check because otherwise we have to expose some things. You know, you know, so bad. You know, you need to quit. Okay. Uh, no. You got a lot of promises lined up. You have a lot of things that have been spoken over your lives. Hope deferred makes the heart sick. The Lord says, I'm bringing healing to your heart. 
I'm bringing restoration to you. Enough is enough. And even how the enemy's come and he's attacked the boundaries, your family, we break that attack right now. And we commission the angels of heaven to stir the pool. That healing will come, not just for you two, but for all those involved around you. The thief has been discovered. He must return seven times over. Come, Holy Spirit. Tomorrow's going to be a better day. You know, a lot of times when we're walking in the kingdom, we get to a point, you know, we, we wake up in the morning, it's, oh, good God, it's morning, instead of good morning, God. You know, and, and you know, <clears throat> God wants to flip that for us. You know, if we're the winners, I'd hate to see the losers, you know. are like, what happened? I got born again. Oh, you look like a mess. You know, <clears throat> the Lord wants to bring that freedom. I think he's going to make an example out of you too. Okay? Come on, church. What would Jesus do? We don't have to pump him up. He's already here. We don't have to conjure him up. He desires, he wants, Susie says, he wants to bless you more than you want to be blessed. He's more present in you than you are in yourself. He knows who you are and what you are and the needs you're dealing with. And he says, hey, I want to set you free. Oh, but Lord, the, the water didn't bubble. Get your eyes off the pool and get your eyes on him. Healings in the house, deliverance in the house. We need to think beyond the horizon and we need to get way up and really. You, you, you're, you're, you're lacking vision? Go sit with a the visionary. They'll scare you. You know, that's right. You know, you know, don't talk to the finance guy. He'll bother you. But, you know, you know, you know. but you, you, you really need to begin to see things that are not as if they are. You know, what if? What if? And a lot of times people say that. Well, if we pray for that guy, what if he doesn't get healed? What if he doesn't get delivered? What if we start the building project and we don't have enough money? What happens if we don't get the permits? What if we don't get the land? What if we don't? What if we don't? Here's a better question. What if we do? Come on. I want a party. I want to see that take place. You know, I'm looking forward, you know, not because the building would be bigger, but how many more people will come in? And don't we need more people born again? Lord, for our inheritance, give us the loss. For God so love he gave. Lord, spend me. Don't just send me, spend me. I don't want to save it for a rainy day. It's raining. And I want to see my nation redeemed by the blood of Jesus. Are you sick and tired of being sick and tired? Don't, do you like what's going on in your government? You know, look at ours. Come on, pray. You know, do you, do you like what's happening in your nation? Do you like what's happening? Do you like the way things have become scary? Enough is enough. Come Holy Spirit, have your way. We're going to rule and reign in Jesus' name. We're not going to protest in the streets. We're going to pray down heaven. We're going to pray down the results. And that means this. Here I am, Lord, send me. Like that, you know, someone shared in the first service that, you know what, I, I don't care if it's your delivery man, I don't care if you're the gasoline guy, I don't care if it's the executive, your banker, here I am, Lord, send me. Let me be a living example of the power of the Holy Spirit. Does that make sense? Listen, you're rich. You're rich. And the Lord wants to spend you. Now, you can all put your hands in your wallet and say, protect me. But, you know, this is it. But here's what it means. Spend yourself on the kingdom of God. And we were talking earlier with a guy and said, listen, you want to be a good Jewish, you know, follower of Jesus and honor the Sabbath? Give your 10%. You want to be a believer? Ask the Lord how much you should keep. Because it all belongs to him. Spend yourself on the kingdom. You cannot outgive God. Emotionally, physically, spiritually, financially, Let's do this thing. You know, <laughs> this isn't just, you know, a little metaphor. It's not just like, well, oh, yeah, amen. It's like the chicken and the pig. You know, they're walking down the road and they see all these starving children. And the chicken says, oh, look at those children. We should make them breakfast. The pig looks over and says, well, my commitment's a little bit deeper, you know. It's like, right. <laughs> Welcome to the pigs. You know? <laughs> it's more than just eggs. It's giving our whole, all in all, to Jesus. 
Holy Spirit, come. Holy Spirit, I pray that the things that you are speaking way beyond my understanding and way beyond my revelation. Man, the Lord's entrusting to you the nations. Listen carefully, Harvest. He's entrusting to you the nations. Many of you sitting in this room will affect nation upon nation. Many of you are going to change your nation. You're going to change your community. You're going to change your government, your politics, your financial system, your businesses. Hear what the Spirit is saying. You don't need the pole to, to bubble. Here comes the Holy Spirit naturally in your midst and saying, come on in, the water's fine. I want to show you my presence. I want to show you my power. I want to show you my glory. And so, Father, we pray, give us eyes to see, ears to hear, and hearts of understanding that we might apply ourselves to the fullness of God. We won't settle for being sick and tired anymore because we're sick and tired of being sick and tired. And we want to see your glory. Come, Holy Spirit. Bring life in Jesus' name. Just lift your hands up to the Lord right now. And, you know, be careful here. Because we're going to say, here I am, Lord, send me. But the scripture is very clear. When you vow a vow to the Lord, be not slothful to pay it, for he will surely require it of you. He's already seized your hand, so you might as well obey. Say, here I am, Lord. Send me. Use me in every aspect that's available. I want to spend myself on the kingdom. Thank you, Lord, for answering. Thank you it's today and not postponed. Put me in, coach. I want to play. Do that, we pray in Jesus' name. Amen.